Hey everybody, I'm Matthew Morris, and today we're going to be talking about a new camera. Now before we get into that, first off, I just hope that all of you and your family are safe and well during this uh, coronavirus pandemic that's going on right now. So now this new camera, no, it's not a Fuji. In fact, in fact, I sold the X-H1, which I loved that camera. I also sold my Fuji 16mm f1.4 and a Canon 80D and a bunch of Canon lenses and other things to buy this Hasselblad X1D 250C with the 45mm f4 P lens. I have no doubt one of the first questions you're probably asking yourself is why didn't I buy the Fuji GFX 50R? Well, I tried both. I went down to a local Atlanta camera rental house and the X1D2 just felt better. Um, and that was really like one of the biggest things. And besides that, I do know it's a tad slower for continuous uh, shooting for autofocus and I know it costs more money. But it's smaller with this new f4 uh, 45 millimeter lens, which is the equivalent to a 35 millimeter field of view for a medium format or a full frame camera either. It's really a great size. I also bought the camera because I wanted to start making larger prints of my photos, even larger than say the one that's behind me. Now the X1D, it does have uh, two UHS-2 card slots. And then below that, uh, there's a USB-C cable. Uh, mic in and headphones out. The grip is nice and deep, but it's still very easy to get to all the dials, all the buttons. Now the camera does weigh more than X-T3, um, weighs about the same as the GFX 50R, but it's also made of solid aluminum. When I look at my photos um, in Lightroom, uh, you know, 90% of them are at F5.6 or higher. Um, f5.6 or f8. So I figured an f4 lens will get me 90% of what I'm shooting when I'm shooting 35 millimeter. Now the depth of field for this lens, I know it's f4, but it's more like an f3.3 or 3.5 when compared to a medium format sensor. To adjust the aperture, um, unlike on the Fujis, there's not all these dials on top or on the lens. So for aperture, um, I have that mapped to the front dial here. I have shutter speed mapped to the rear dial, and that's very much like any DSLR from Canon or Nikon. Now on top, there's a mode dial, and you hit the little button, it pops out, and you turn it around. So you've got manual, aperture priority, shutter priority, program, full auto, movie, and then you have three custom op options that you can set as well. Um, I pretty much shoot on manual with this camera. Push that button down and you're ready to go. Up on top next to that, you've got the autofocus, manual focus button. You have the ISO and the white balance button. Now on the back, it's hard to miss. You turn the screen on, it comes up relatively fast and there is a 3.6 inch full touchscreen. It acts just like you think it would you tap on something, so this is for the f-stop on the lens. You can easily just move that around, change it to whatever you want. Click on this button and it jumps into your meter mode, so you can change that from center weight to spot to center spot. And then on the right hand side, you have five buttons. Um, the ones you're probably gonna use the most is the play button, which gives you the photos that are on your card. There's a button to punch in for a critical focus. Uh, there's a button to close windows. There's a button to jump into all of your settings. There's a button uh, on the front that is kind of unique to this Hasselblad camera. When you change the aperture on either the camera in the back or by using the dial up in front, the aperture rings don't open and close. Only until you hit that depth of field button do those rings open or close and then they give you the preview of the depth of field of the image you're about to shoot. Now I want to talk more about Hasselblad's focus software, but we're going to do that in another video. For now, let's jump into some video and photos I took before we went into the lockdown for coronavirus. Now the first day I went out 
to use the camera, I got onto the Marta just like I love to do. And I was just learning how to use it, so I definitely missed a bunch of shots that I wanted to get. It wasn't because of the camera, it was because I was still learning how to use the camera. But I definitely did really love um, how this shot came out with the man on the bench waiting for the train to come. Now for day two, I went out and I parked at Pont City Market here in Atlanta. And my plan was to walk from Pont City Market to the Beltline to Piedmont Park, take pictures on the way there, take pictures of the park, and then come back and take pictures on the way back. And when I did that, I wanted to shoot entirely in the X-Pan crop mode, which is really fun. Now, when you take pictures in the camera in any of the crop modes, you, any of them, one by one, X-Pan, doesn't matter, the camera itself actually takes a picture of the entire sensor and applies the crop that you see in the viewfinder uh, or on the back screen to that image in the raw file. What's great about this is afterwards, the crop comes into Hasselblad's focus software embedded in the raw file so you can adjust the crop. Now because the X1D from Hasselblad not only has focus for the desktop, but also focus for the iPad, especially you can do tethering with the iPad Pro, then you have this full kind of uh, work suite there. Then in another video, we're gonna, as I said, we're gonna jump into focus and then uh, focus on the iPad at some point too. Now let's talk about using other lenses. Hasselblad sells adapters for their H, V, and X-Pan series lenses, and third parties sell adapters as well. On the V series lenses, those would fit on a Hasselblad 500 Type-C camera or X-Pan lenses. You can only use electronic shutter because they don't have leaf shutter mechanisms in those lenses. But on an H series lens, like this one, I went out and purchased an 80 millimeter f 2.8 h series lens which is an older version of the lens this is the smallest lens in the h series line as well uh, and because it's older than the current versions or the more current versions with the more current chip um, I, I don't get autofocus on this camera on an h series camera i would get autofocus but i do get shutter speed control and aperture control this is what the adapter plus the 80 millimeter lens uh, looks like as far as length. I spent a little bit more than $500 on this lens. I bought the adapter and with the manual focus, which is not focused by wire, it's mechanical, and then the ability to punch in for critical focus or use peaking, it's not that hard to grab focus with this lens. Now the last thing I want to touch on is battery life. It's a pretty big battery. You to get the battery out, you just uh, flick this little switch here, you push it down, it pops out. It's a pretty big battery, but you only get like 230, 270 shots, something like that. It takes probably a lot of electricity to power this camera. I mean, think how big the sensor is and how much electricity it's going to need, let alone you know what it needs to move all this glass around in this lens but if you're walking around and the camera is constantly on like I did on my second day I changed the sleep so it would instead of going to sleep right away instead of taking seconds it would take minutes to go to sleep that day I shot through one full battery and about 50% of another battery and I was out for about four hours but the camera was on most of the time so if you were gonna go on assignment uh, for an entire day, or if you were going to go on a trip, like last year, uh, went to Portugal and Italy and walked around all day and come back and charge batteries and walk around all day the next day, I would say you probably need to get three, if not four batteries, maybe more if you really feel like you may need them. 
Now I have the dual battery charger. I bought that when I bought the camera. It charges two batteries at once, plus you can charge the battery in the camera, and that's three batteries in total. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I'm, I'm loving the camera. Um, I want to talk more about it when I get the chance to go out and shoot more. Um, but until then, I'm just really happy I was able to go out for those couple of days before things got really bad and, and have some fun with the camera, which is giving me images to play with and learn uh, how to use their focus software. So that's it. I hope all of you are safe and uh, well. Um, let me know what you think about this camera or if you've been thinking about going the medium format, do you own the camera? Do you have the GFX 50R? Whatever it is, leave that in the comments below. Otherwise, like, share, and subscribe and go out and make life an adventure.